Welcome, Comet Chasers. September is upon us with a full lineup of comets, visible to those with no more than binoculars or a small telescope. Every comet has a story, but this month you'll need to set the coffee to brew a wee bit early to read it. C2023 P1, Nishimura, is one of the highlights of September. This newly discovered comet starts the month in Cancer with a magnitude of 6.6 .6 and a 5.5 arc-minute coma. As the month progresses, it's expected to gradually brighten, transitioning into Virgo by the month's end. It is on its way to perihelion, or closest approach to the Sun, on September 17th, and it will not be well-placed for observation afterward. We don't yet know how large the actual comet body is. If small, as the absolute magnitude suggests, it might not survive perihelion at all. Interestingly, as observations come in and the orbit improves, it appears that this comet is not on its first trip through the inner solar system. It has been reported that Robert Warrick has found pre-2023 images of the comet that point to an orbit of approximately 437 years, leading to the possibility that it passed by the Sun in the late 1500s, likely unnoticed. If so, it may survive after all, because this isn't its first rodeo. We will just have to wait and see if it comes out the other side intact. Visibility of this comet is best early in the month, and after that the show will likely be over. It is an early morning object and can be seen from all but southern latitudes. Interference from the moon will make this a bit harder than it would be otherwise. The comet will brighten with each morning, but will also move closer to the sun, bringing it lower in the sky and thus more difficult to see before twilight begins. From 40 degrees north, it will be most easily visible until the morning of the 9th. At 55 degrees north, that will extend to the morning of the 10th. So how can you spot it? Start by finding a location with a very clear view of the eastern horizon. Go out before dawn, before 3 a.m. is best. The sky will still be dark but the comet will still be very low. Try to identify the stars nearby in order to pin down where to search. Note the position of Venus, which will be very bright, off to the right of where the comet will be. Our charts here are to give you a general idea. It is always best to use software set to your location to find the object yourself. Mastering the technique with binoculars takes a bit of practice. Look at the expected location in the sky and hold your eyes steady and still while bringing the binoculars up until you can see through them, moving your eyes as little as possible as you do. This will get you to the right area. Scan around a bit looking for a faint round glow. You may not see it at first, but as the morning progresses it will move higher and will be easier to see, so keep at it. Eventually the glow of twilight will begin and the sky will become too bright to see the comet. There is a sweet spot in between, where the comet is high and in enough darkness to see it clearly. Very generally, the best view in the first days of the month should come around 4 a.m., about one and a half hours before sunrise. By the ninth, that will be closer to 4.30 a.m. Far northern observers will see it up to a half hour earlier. Chris Beckett, observing from the Canadian prairies, made this sketch of Nishimura on the morning of August 25th. At the time, the comet was fainter. Chris had been inspired by a report that the comet had been seen in binoculars and decided to give it a try himself with his own 7x50 binoculars. It took three early mornings to accomplish this, due to poor weather and thick smoke. But that Sunday morning proved to be the clearest sky they'd seen all summer. He noted in his log that, I quickly panned down the now familiar path from Castor and Pollux, following it to the Omega-1 and Omega-2 Cancri Cascade, to Mu-1 Cancri, and to my surprise, I could see a very faint circular smudge. Success. At the time, the comet was approximately 7.5 magnitude, and the coma was a perfectly round smudge. No tail was detected. As dawn breaks this September, another comet beckons to be seen, this one with an illustrious history. Located initially in Origa, 2P slash Enke boasts a magnitude of 11.4 and presents observers with a three arc minute coma. As the month progresses, the comet's brightness promises to intensify swiftly, shifting its position to Leo by the time September bids us farewell. Late September heralds the most favorable viewing circumstances, when it will be best, as seen in binoculars, from the 23rd on. As the moon's glow diminishes by 4 a.m., the comet will offer an interesting view for everyone except those in the southern hemisphere. Come morning twilight, it will be found in the eastern sky, 
If you are paying attention, this chart may look familiar. Indeed, 2P slash Enki will trot a very similar path to 2023 P1 Nishimura, essentially following it down toward the rising sun only a few weeks later. By that time, Nishimura will be lost in the sun's glare and possibly lost altogether. Through a telescope, Enki might trick your eyes. It often resembles a large, very diffuse cloud that's easy to overlook, housing a minuscule, almost star-like nucleus. But here's a tip for aspiring comet chasers. Opt for smaller instruments with expansive fields, such as binoculars. By showing the comet in a wider field of view, your eyes can more easily distinguish the faint glow of the relatively large coma. Bigger isn't always better in astronomy. October, however, holds even greater promise for 2P slash Enki. Anticipation builds as the comet inches towards perihelion on October 22nd. It should be even easier to spot in binoculars than in September, but only briefly before the moon interferes from the 7th through the 9th of October. Diving deep into the annals of astronomy, 2P slash Enki holds a storied past. It was first spotted in the skies over Paris in 1786 by Pierre Machin. Over the subsequent years, it was rediscovered multiple times before J.F. Enke recognized these observations as sightings of the same celestial body. Owing to his contributions, the comet proudly bears his name. Of the numerous times Enke graced our skies, a three-degree tail in 1805 remains its most memorable spectacle. The comet has seen its share of astronomical highs and lows. Enke's meticulous work in the early 1800s led to its recovery in 1822. Although its brightness has dimmed since its earliest recorded magnitude of 3.5 in 1829, it remains a marvel in the night sky, tangibly connecting the observer to those of the past. Orbitally, 2P slash Enki has had its dance with planets. Over the last century, it's had close encounters with Mercury, Earth, and Jupiter. Its stature might be humble, being just three miles in diameter, but its significance is profound. As a celestial wanderer with the shortest known orbital period, Enki's frequent returns make it a beloved object among stargazers. But there's more. Each year, as October and November nights darken, the torrid meteor shower graces our skies. These fast, luminous meteors, often culminating around Halloween, owe their existence to 2P slash Enki. These Halloween fireballs, a festive name for the torrid's brightest meteors, are a testament to the comet's enduring influence on our night sky. For centuries, 2P slash Enki has captivated the minds of astronomers, and this year, as it journeys across our skies, it invites us all to share in its celestial story. 103P slash Hartley begins September in the constellation Perseus, shining at a magnitude of 11.2, with a three-arc minute coma. As the weeks advance, expect the comet to brighten by about 1.3 magnitudes, passing into Auriga by the month's close. For the best view, aim for the period after mid-September. The moon's glow will be less intrusive during this time. Observers will find Hartley high in the sky from about 3 to 4 a.m., except for those in the southern hemisphere who'll need to look a bit later, around 4.30 a.m. There, it will appear low in the northern sky. As we approach the end of September, Hartley will be high in the sky during the early morning twilight hours. Discovered in 1986 by Malcolm Hartley at the Siding Spring Observatory in New South Wales, Australia, this comet's trajectory has been notably influenced by close brushes with Jupiter. In 2010, it made a close approach to Earth. The Epoxy mission visited this comet, using the Deep Impact spacecraft after its 2005 study of Comet 9P slash Temple was completed. During this mission, the closest approach was recorded on November 4, 2010, at a mere 434 miles from the comet, unveiling its peanut-shaped nucleus. The nucleus of 103P slash Hartley is comparatively young and small, spanning about 1.4 miles across. Interestingly, it belongs to the Jupiter family of comets, which have orbital periods under 20 years. C2020V2, ZTF, which was discovered in November 2020 by the Zwicky Transient Facility, is another comet visible in small telescopes, which we define as 4 inches or 100 millimeters in diameter. This comet begins in the constellation Cetus at magnitude 9.9. .9. It displays a 4.5 arc-minute coma. By month's end, it will transition to the constellation Sculptor.
These comets are remnants from our solar system's early days, silently voyaging through space. Their subtle beauty and mystery need no embellishment. They stand as testaments to the vastness and wonder of the universe we're a part of. Oh, and one more thing. September offers an intriguing challenge. How many of these comets can you spot on a single morning? Happy Comet chasing everyone. We will see you again next month unless something unexpected comes along.